How's it going, everyone? Down here at the garage, I was messing around with some trapping stuff and get myself some more beer out of the refrigerator whenever I had an idea because I get asked this quite often actually at the conventions that I go to and just some people who see the stuff that I make. And one question I'm asked a lot is which of the two drags that I make do I like the most? I like them both. They both work really, really well. And I've had a lot of good reviews from some customers that have bought them at the conventions and that. And I have shipped some to some people, but as much as that costs, it's really, really ridiculous to ship drags. Uh, I don't get any of them shipping discounts that the big stores get. But uh, to answer the question, which one I like the most? Uh, it's the triangular drag and I'm just going to demonstrate just a small little demonstration here of why so most of your drags built like this you know you got your saber tooth and then some other ones that you know and plus like a lot of the ones you make yourself out of rebar and that are similar constructed like this you got the drag point at an angle here and somewhat of an angle inward you got your body of the drag you got this big gap from the point to the body of the drag here. So, to uh, demonstrate why I prefer this drag over this one, is I do not depend on my points to stop my catch. I depend on the drag and its actual hooking point to stop my catch. So if I take this drag and I put it right here on this sapling, because the animal is probably not gonna run right between that little gap. But even if it did, then this drag would work just fine. But it catches on that sapling. And I got like a ton of chain here. But you'll see what happens with this style drag. When I pull, it rides right up the sapling, bends it over, falls off, catches on its way to another location before it gets caught on another sapling or whatnot. Drag still works phenomenally. Those are good drags. The saber tooths are awesome. That Pretty much that style drag works really, really well. But just gonna show, I have this one just hooked like that that is not how i hook my drags up do not hook your drags up like this please this is just for demonstration so i'm going to set this one just like i did that one and i'm going to grab this chain long chain again same length as the other one and i'm going to pull and that's it i'm done I'm pulling as hard as I can. <clears throat> that won't ride up the tree. Because that triangular style, you can see where that round stock rode right up that tree pretty easily. That did not go up that tree an inch. And why is because it wedges into the tree, locks itself right into it. This guides it right into the body of the drag, and that's it, it's wedged. Can't come up the tree. So, that's why I make my triangular drags go from the end clean to the body. You got plenty of room here for a decent sized tree. Two, three inch sapling to get into here. And then that's it, it's over. It will wedge in and can't go up the tree. So that's why I like that triangular drag better. It has that extra hookup feature as far as the capabilities of a drag. And this one still rototills in the ground just fine. It digs right in like nothing. It leaves a heck of a trail for you to follow just like that style drag does. And, uh, it just has that added benefit of the smallest little sapling. I mean, 
that's that's as big as my finger and I was tugging on it with all my body weight there and it got stayed locked in and stayed there at the base so now your catch comes around the rest of these little saplings and it's game over catch ain't going nowhere so figured I'd just share that since I have been asked that before which style of the two drags that I make do I like the most and it is that style right there so I hope that helped you out. Maybe gave you a new perspective on drags and you know, it's not always depending on that point digging in and locking up on something. Maybe it's the way the overall body of that drag can help benefit you. If there's not much material for it to dig into and lock up on other than a little sapling or that drag along the field edge that has goldenrod growing up the whole way around it. I've never had a coyote take that drag no further than maybe three feet in that goldenrod before. That's so packed and wedged full of all the goldenrods it's holding it there. So thanks for checking that out and until next time everyone.